Well, thank you so very much for the invitation to lunch today. Um, it's been a year since we last spoke, and at that time I was actually, had been in office for a total of 12 weeks. And um, I'm a little bit older, I'm a little bit wiser, I probably use my Miss Clairol a little more often. <laughs> Uh, but I will tell you that um, I'm so glad that I'm doing what we're doing. Um, it's, some people have asked me, you know, is it all you thought it would be? And I said, it's all I thought it would be and more. Um, I, before I, I start, I really wanted to s extend my most sincere appreciation to so many people in this room. Um, you've been welcoming, um, open-minded, open hearts. And we're gonna see some of the work that we've done together because I think it's made all the difference in the world for our community. Uh, did, have done, um, may, spent a lot of time trying to build some momentum. And I love this quote because success requires first expending 10 units of energy to produce one unit of results. And your momentum will then produce 10 units of results with each unit of effort. And, I feel our energy building uh, in large part because of so many of you in this room today. Um, we're gonna be talking about uh, a number of different themes. We uh, have spent time reforming government and we're gonna be talking about fiscal accountability, what we've done to save money, to generate some additional revenue, to make some systems improvements in the city. Um, spent a lot of time with shared service agreements and creating partnerships and regional relationships for the, for the Illyria community. Safety, a big focus. We're gonna show you some stats, but also um, talk with you a little bit about what we're doing to um, make Illyria a safer community for all of us. Promoting economic vitality. I mean, the bottom line is jobs are on everybody's mind. And what is the, the city of Illyria doing to help promote economic um, vitality for our community? We're doing some things a little bit differently than we, we have done before, and I'll spend some time talking about that. Some of you in this room have been involved with that. Um, our neighborhoods have been a big focus. We're gonna be talking about um, uh, focusing on our, again, our safety, our community building, some things we're doing, um, improving our housing stock. Um, Revitalizing our business districts. We've got four separate distinct business districts in our community, and um, we've got a, a slightly different approach for all of them, but we are working through that. Um, developing an image of Elyria that's deserving. And um, we've had some uh, tremendous international publicity over the past 12 months, and it has led to some very positive leads for our community. And then finally, building trust and community support. It's important to everything we do. One of the things that um, I talked about in the context of uh, running for office was being accountable to taxpayers. And we did leverage the funds for a voluntary performance audit for the city of Elyria, and um, we will be completing that audit process and the, the results will be released in March uh, next month been working very closely with the state auditor's office and I have to give a lot of credit to all of our department heads because they've embraced it. Um, we have some of the finest employees that you'd ever want to meet in the city of Elyria who are very interested in doing what's right, uh, looking at best practices and doing things better. And um, I think it's gonna make a real difference for us. We've looked at some things. Uh, we looked at our energy. Energy is a, is a big issue in all public organizations. We use a lot of energy in the city of Illyria. We have a new cooperative purchasing agreement that saved us $36,000 in 2012 through 2015. We are gonna save $903,000. Um, we uh, entered a joint jail user agreement uh, between the EPD and the Lorraine County Sheriff's Office. It saves about $1.2 million annually or over $5 million through 2015. Um, this allows us, uh, it frees up jail space for our prisoners and we are housing female prisoners uh, in our space as well. And the total cost to the city of Elyria for that is now about $25,000, where it used to be over a million dollars a year. <coughs> Healthcare, we've, we've all struggled with that in our organizations. The city's no different. <laughs> Um, rising healthcare costs, they've been rising at about 13% every year, so we looked at 
um, rebidding our health insurance broker, uh, saving about $44,000 annually or $156,000 through 2015. Um, we're doing some things differently in terms of our prescription rebates. Uh, again, um, over the next several years, we're going to be looking at $220,000 worth of savings. Um, we were able to leverage a rebate on our third-party medical oversight and um, working with our employee groups. Our employees understand the challenges that we're having and have voluntarily um, increased their contributions as well. So working collaboratively with, with our employee groups in return, we want to create a very positive work environment for them. So we're focusing on wellness programming and have brought an ease at work program into the workplace. Again, um, we had some contracts that hadn't been bid um, over a 12-year process and others that needed to be rebid. We rebid our copier contract, uh, saving a, another chunk of money there, as you can see, $94,000 over five years. Eliminated a dumpster, small, but it adds up. Um, rebid our towing contracts, our uniform and floor mat contracts for some better value. We think it's important to set an example, and um, the city of Elyria, in terms of our salaries, we've counted on longevity for a long period of time to make our community competitive. We're looking at trying to do some things differently, so to set an example, we did eliminate longevity for our senior staff, um, and that has led to $9,500 in savings for my three senior staff, eliminated vehicles. Um, you can see the savings there. I've eliminated my car and mileage and make a donation back of my salary, part of my salary on an annual basis because I want people to understand that we all need to take some personal responsibility and make some personal sacrifices to help make our community better. In terms of uh, take home cars, we've reduced take home cars from 15 to seven. Um, my safety service director looks at every single purchase order that goes through the city of Valeria. And um, very, very tight oversight We've even restructured our snowplow routes using some of our engineering mapping tools to make sure that our travel routes are as efficient as possible, saving on gasoline. Be able to reduce our cell phone costs. Um, we've replaced some of our traffic police with generator operated pop-up signs. It sounds silly, but it works. Um, replaced many of our paper forms. Uh, extended life of our equipment through a partnership with the county um, to store equipment. That's always been a challenge in the city of Elyria. And as a result of that, we're saving money. Uh, we don't have to replace tires and maintain that equipment at quite the expense that we have in the past. And then trying to leverage, uh, we use the residents from the uh, Lorraine Medina County Correctional Facility for some, and Lorraine County Workforce Development for some summer work. Um, in terms of working with our neighbors. Uh, we're selling additional water to North Ridgeville, um, anticipating between 50 and $300,000 of additional revenue annually, increasing our cemetery fees, increasing recycling, held a city auction to try to get some of the, uh, rid of some of our obsolete equipment, um, leveraged a, a safer grant. We have, uh, for the second time, a safer grant to help extend the life of our fire department <laughs> Uh, right now and salvage contract. We have changed our salvage contract to realize some additional revenue from that. Um, our engineering department was very instrumental in helping to leverage funds to, for the improvement of Cascade Park and I'll talk a little bit more about that agreement in a little bit but um, we are going to be joining with the Metro Parks to make some very much needed uh, capital improvements to the park in addition, obviously, to making a, an investment on behalf of the city of Elyria that I think will be beneficial to all Elyrians. <laughs> Philanthropic support. Many of you have been very involved in some of these things, but um, we have, you've all embraced some things that we're trying to do to, to add value for our community and have given very generously over $154,000 for some of those initiatives, summer camps, summer programming, auxiliary police, and holiday lights. And then, um, in terms of building better neighborhoods, we picked two streets in the city of Elyria and we said, okay, what can we do as a community to help? And $100,000 worth of in-kind products and services came together to help our residents in need. Um, sh new services and partnerships. We have a, uh, an emerging 50-year lease agreement with the Lorraine County Metro Parks, as I mentioned, 
It's had its second reading in council and will be adopted uh, in the next few weeks. Um, we have shared service agreements with the City of Lorraine and, and City of Elyria Health Departments. Um, there's limited revenue for health and there's lots of health needs, so Mayor Rittenauer and I are working closely to try to make some things happen. Um, collaborations with Elyria Health Department and many other organizations, not just here in Lorraine County, but also in Cuyahoga County to help deliver service. And then um, we also have a new uh, training program, uh, thanks to Mrs. Sawarka and the Cleveland Clinic. Um, they have lent us their customer service training, have modified it to, for the first time in its history to a municipality, and uh, we're, we're getting to critical capacity with training in customer service for all of our employees of the city of Elyria. Um, we have a shared service agreement with North Ridgeville to share equipment. And um, again, the jail agreement is very helpful. Um, Lorain County Workforce. One of the things that's really unique is I've had an opportunity to come out and talk with a number of businesses, including some of you. And um, four or five businesses share some common barriers to expansion in our community because of some EPA issues and some other things. So we, in, we went and visited NASA and we said, is there anything that you can do to help us apply NASA technology to remove some barriers for, to help uh, with business growth in the city of Elyria. So we have a new partnership with NASA and they are currently working with some of our employers to help some of them with some of their most vexing growth challenges and we're excited to see what might come of that. Uh, NASA is also working with us. They provide curriculum and training for our summer camps uh, through STEM and that's good news for our school district as well who also has representatives with us. Uh, we have a new partnership uh, for, we have a partnership for Elyria's youth. Um, Last year was the first time lots of these organizations started working together to provide more healthy alternatives for our kids. And I'll tell you a little bit more about those later. Uh, we have a quality review partnership with EMH Healthcare and our EMS services here in the community. Um, and um, shared service agreements with Lorraine County for equipment storage. And we're also in conversations with uh, Lorraine County Community College. They have a wonderful small uh, business uh, structure there, there's lots of spin-off opportunities, and we're looking at how we might be able to connect some of those small business opportunities to some of our different business districts. We're also in ongoing discussions about 911 police dispatch and pending joint discussions for Elyria and Lorraine's health district. So lots of collaborative conversations going on. Um, there's some additional opportunities. I talked about things that we've been doing this year, but we do see some additional cost savings pending from our performance audit. Um, we're gonna be looking at some additional cost savings from changes to our supervisory contracts, uh, projecting at about $100,000. Uh, we're looking at consolidating more purchases and bidding, more shared services, growing the tax base through economic development. And I'm sure many of you heard about our $3.4 million demutualization windfall. And um, while it's always good to get a windfall like that, I just caution, um, I've been accused of not smiling enough about this, but I will tell you, <laughs> it's always better to get a windfall than not get a windfall. Um, the issue is though, um, that if, when, you, when I share with you some of the information about our upcoming financial challenges, um, it won't solve all of our problems, but it certainly will help as it relates to, uh, we're not gonna be using the money to supplant ongoing personnel costs because we don't wanna create another structural deficit in our budget, um, but it is a wonderful opportunity to use it for critical one-time projects, maybe pay off some debt, and that's a conversation that we'll be having with our, um, our city council here shortly. We spent some time um, improving systems as well, and, and this really does, lead to some efficiencies. One of the challenges that we've had in the city of Elyria is that there, there was no HR department um, when we arrived. And so some things had been undone just because there just wasn't time or coordinated effort to do it. So uh, used one of my assistant safety service director positions in that role and we're busy updating job descriptions, creating an evaluation system and all those things that go into a healthy HR uh, training programs, employee assistance, um, really trying to include employee groups more in conversations um, about health fringe benefits and healthcare benefits. Um, 
just some, something as simple as holding regular staff meetings, the customer service training. Uh, we created a new intranet for the city, so there's a new communications vehicle internally for us. Um, we launched an IT supporting ticket system. Uh, we replaced 111 computers that were eight to nine years old, and we created a citizen complaint tracking form that's really making it uh, better. If you look at some of those efficiencies and add them up, if even excluding the jail, the one-time grants we're not including in this number, uh, we have managed to save and or create an additional million dollars of revenue in the last 12 months, and we're proud of that. Um, it is significant, and it, it is the result of an awful lot of hard work on behalf of our department heads and the employees in the city of Illyria. Um, Again, this doesn't include grants. It, it doesn't include one-time revenue generation or the jail at $1.2 million. So those are just those little things that add up a little bit at a time. Um, we have some other uh, fiscal accountability concerns. So while $3.4 million sounds like a lot, these are some of the things on our plate that we need to deal with now or in the very near future. Um, we do have a, an emergency demolition of the former city hall going on. Um, the building was collapsing from the outside in, and it was important that we address that. We found that out in February when we took office. That's got a $600,000 price tag on it. So unfortunately, over half of that money that we just saved. Um, general industries cleanup. The city is working uh, with that property owner. We are um, working through it in terms of litigation, and there are some possibilities. Our, it, for those of you concerned or interested, we are dealing with it. It may be that um, if we can't force the property owner to address some of the issues beyond EPA is already done with what they're going to do, um, the city of Valeria might qualify for some cleanup money if we were to take ownership of the property. And so it's something that we are looking at. Uh, water treatment and distribution improvements. Uh, we have a, an $8 million ticket associated with that. We've got wastewater treatment plant updates that are needed, $35 million. Sanitary sewers, $3 million. Stormwater management control plan, which is an unfunded mandate by the EPA, $2 million annually once upon implementation. Um, we need to make some improvements to our long-term wastewater uh, plant through a control plan. It has an $84 million price tag. Um, an expansion of our sanitary sewer system because the local settlement is about $25 million. So it is daunting. It's a daunting list of things that are going to need to be done. And um, we're going to have to figure out how that fits into our overall budget. This is Elyria's fiscal cliff. Well, not really. It's Cascade Park. But um, these are very real challenges. Um, we had an issue on the ballot this spring. We were trying to return citizens' ability to vote on income tax-related issues in primary elections. Unfortunately, it failed. And for those of you who don't know, the city of Elyria right now can only put income tax-related issues, whether they're renewal or replacement or additional, on November ballots. So basically, we have a renewal um, that's coming up. It's a 0.5% five-year temporary tax that generates $6 million a year. That renewal, um, our only chance to pass it is November of 2013. That's a $6 million annual chunk of the city of Illyria's budget. And if it doesn't pass, uh, basically it means that we're gonna have to go without $6 million of our $30 million budget in addition to some other declining revenues that we're seeing. We've got a $1.7 million reduction in 2013 due to the repeal of the estate tax, a decline in the local government fund, and then some other things that are going to be expiring account for another $5 million, meaning um, we have a, a safer grant that will expire. We've got some COPS grants that'll expire. The Invicare layoffs are having an impact. When you add all that up, Elyria has about a $30 million, this is our general fund, $30,724,000 general fund. You can see how it breaks out in terms of income tax. But if you look at the lines, with passage of the income tax, it goes from 30.7 million to 24.7. Without it, it goes from 30.7 to 19.6. I will tell you that we cannot operate the city that way. And so I ask you to take that into consideration and help us because we are doing everything we possibly can to create efficiencies, to save money, to increase revenue. 
Um, and the city of Elyria is running pretty lean right now. Um, but we, are, we have some challenges in, in front of us. And one of the things is definitely to pass an income tax renewal uh, this November. And then through uh, our performance audit results and through some of these other efficiencies that we've already created, we're trying to whittle that additional money down. So we've got a $6 million expiring from the income tax. We've got another additional $5 million from those other monies. How do we whittle away at that additional $5 million? That's a huge challenge to us. But with challenges come opportunity. Um, we are looking at, this was President Obama talking about jobs at Lorain County Community College when he visited in April. Um, we're, we're dealing with some things to help try to grow our tax base. And while I'm a huge advocate for very carefully using public funds for private investment, because I don't think that's something you do lightly, I do think that there are some things that we can do in addition to what we're doing now. Um, I participate on, with all these organizations to the left, trying to, we're spending some time trying to align Elyria's assets with the opportunities in our region. So we're, I'm a board member of the Northeast Ohio Sustainable Communities Initiative. It's a 12 county planning organization that is trying to come up with ways to reinvigorate our economies, tie our transportation systems together and some other things. Um, we have partners in Team Lorraine County, the Chamber, Glide, Ohio Small Business Development Center, Team NEO, Greater Cleveland Partnership, and we work regularly with these organizations. We've, again, identified some retention and expansion barriers. The example I gave earlier uh, in terms of working with NASA. Um, and we have done some other things. We have revised the design review process to make it a little bit more business friendly uh, for business owners outside of the downtown commons area. <laughs> And we have addressed parking and safety issues in downtown Elyria. We also have spent some time trying to expand our economic development toolkit. Um, when I came to the city, we didn't really have one other than we have the ability to leverage TIF funds. Um, and we had a few other things. But these are toolkits that most, organization, most cities have now. We finalized the Elyria Alternative Energy Conservation Loan Fund. We created a job creation opportunity incentive to match the states to help make us competitive. We created a downtown revolving loan fund. And uh, we're working with the city of Oberlin to try to create a, a PACE district. This is a property assessed clean energy district, thinking that there's a niche for us in terms of sustainability here in Lorain County. And then we're starting to plan a planning process. We're targeting downtown right now. We're looking at all of our different business districts, but we want to start someplace in terms of some real focused uh, work. And so we have started by, we've created a property registry and user profile that didn't exist before. Responded to 21 serious economic development inquiries, eight active right now. Worked very hard over a three month period um, with Team Lorain County, Jobs Ohio, and the school district and others to create a $1.4 million incentive package to try to bring 400 jobs to Elyria. And we came this close. We don't have a no yet, but we're still waiting. Um, we've worked with Nawaka and ODOT um, to try to move the schedule for the Midway Mall Route 57 49th Street Bridge project up. Um, I will be providing testimony to the Ohio legislature on that subject this week. Um, because we feel that this is very important to our region. Um, I have been told that they do plan on moving it up. The project actually has a sale date now of July to September of 2014. They've already started the acquisition process for the easements. And so it's good news for Midway Mall. Bottom line, it's very good news for Midway Mall. The other good news piece of that was the original project was bid at $32 million. It has now been moved, um, rebid at $22 million. So it made the project more affordable. The gas tax has picked up a bit. And um, so we're going to get our project done. And um, I'm hopeful that it will come in time to help our mall. I think it will help create some additional commercial value over there and really open up the town to the west side a little bit. It's a major reconfiguration project. Um, Again, we're working with the college on a market analysis for our business districts, and that will be part of how we formulate an economic development plan for the city of Elyria. 
We have been in conversation with Amtrak and Norfolk Southern Railroads. Um, they, um, at first, uh, our, the county commissioners and the county did a wonderful job of renovating the former New York Central Rail Station. My grandfather would, was a dispatcher there for many years, so it's close to my heart. It is um, a, an economic development driver in downtown Elyria because if we could return passenger rail to downtown Elyria, we'd have some more foot traffic there for some retail. They'd, they'd blend, been resistant to work together. And when the New York Times did the story about Elyria being a great American rail city, I took those articles and I mailed them to the presidents of both of those companies. And I said, wouldn't you be like, be, love to be part of re a renovation of a downtown and a historic, uh, further use of a, a historic New York Central Rail Station? And they said yes. So their design, their design um, Communities are working together to see if it's possible, first of all, to do that. And then we'll have the added challenge as a community to explore whether or not it's economically viable. And all we're asking for people to do is keep an open mind right now about it because it certainly could make a difference for the city of Elyria. We've also looked, uh, we're working with the um, Lorain County Arts Council. They would like a presence in downtown Elyria. And we've been organizing some projects, including an art walk and a juried art contest. We want to use some of that art to help market our community. These, this is some of the business growth that's happened in the past year, so things are starting to pick up a little bit. And we've had some challenges as well. Safety. Safety is a big focus for all of us. Um, these are some of the statistics that are available from 2012 from our police department, and I think the one that so many of you have focused on, and we've seen a lot of news about our burglaries and breaking and entering. And we do believe that that is a direct, there is a direct correlation between that and heroin use in Northeast Ohio. It's not just Elyria. It is this entire region. And so one of the major challenges, and I had asked Chief Whiteley to, to look up this number because I wanted to know the number of accidental drug overdoses in the county went from 22 in 2011 to 60 in 2012. So you can see uh, the challenge that we have there. These are some of the other cases by crime type. This is what we're doing. And um, we've really tried to look at this link and, and say, what can we do as a community to better address this? So um, in terms of neighborhood referrals through expanded block watches, you know, we've expanded our block watches from 6 to 11. We're getting a lot more arrests as a result of tips from, from the community. Um, we have a new crime analysis software that's identifying patterns and helping us with targeted follow-up. Um, we're surveilling repeat offenders and we're working with the Lorraine County Drug Task Force, the U.S. Marshal's Office, and there's a Lorraine County liais Liaison for the ATF uh, and the Northern Ohio Violent Crime Consortium that actually works right out of the Elyria Police Department. And so those are great partnerships for us as a community. But we need to do more. Um, alcohol and Drug Services Safety Net needs to be more accessible and expanded. Um, our drug task force in the county is overwhelmed, and they can't do it all themselves. And so um, it'd be great if we had the money to have a narcotics unit back in the city of Elyria. It was eliminated during budget cuts. Um, it's something that we're, we're looking at um, and certainly working um, you know, as closely as we can with the court system as well. And Chief Whiteley will be available when we're done to answer any of your questions about this as well. Um, again, uh, our law department and our EPD worked very closely to address some of the, the issues downtown. We had um, some very dangerous things going on in our downtown. And because of their good work, we were able to shut down the toy box, Uncle Vic's Mardi Gras and bench warmers. We required some safety improvements in, in those other bars that you see up there. We assigned a beat officer downtown, hired a, a downtown parking attendant, installed surveillance camera, uh, relocated the Greyhound bus uh, stop to the transportation center because we were having some mugging issues in another location. And we've been working with Norfolk Southern to improve the railroad underpasses. Again, the expanded block watches. Um, our police officers are actually assigned to our block watches, so they're working with residents. Uh, we held our first neighborhood safety summit this past year, working very closely with the block watch captains. And um, I think it's really helped build this relationship between our EPD 
and our citizens. I think that communication is, is lending itself to better tips. Um, the crime, new crime analysis software is, is working. And you know, a lot of people don't realize this, but the vacant and abandoned homes really harbor crime in our community. And so all the work that we're doing through the land bank to demolish these properties, um, we believe is gonna decrease our arson rate in the city of Elyria, and we also believe it's gonna reduce crime. Again, we expanded our jail space through the partnership. Um, we have a Recruit the Blue campaign going on right now to expand our auxiliary police support. A lot of people don't realize this, but it costs $1,800 to outfit an, a volunteer auxiliary police officer. And there are some very caring individuals who want to volunteer their time, but they can't afford uh, this expense. And so we've done some fundraising to help um, address that issue. Police are now assigned to regular morning school visits, um, and they've won some awards, the Triple Bronze Traffic Safety Award, and you know, Kiwanis, again, because of their support, we're able to keep Safety Town going. That crime analysis software that I talked about, too, uh, led us to this diamond cutting. We identified the cry high crash sites in the community, and we're able to do some diamond cutting to rough up the surfaces to make it more safe. Um, we cleaned up the Lake Avenue Street rail crossing, and then we've upgraded about 25% of the city's traffic intersections with new controllers. Fire department, busy place. Um, 4,023 responses in 2012. You see the loss of fire really escalated, largely because of the Elyria Foundry fire. Um, EMS runs continue to increase, largely because every, all of us in this room continue to get older. We're baby boomers. and. We have some more issues, and um, you know the fire department delivers a lot of uh, public education events too. But you can see how busy they are. Um, we have a, again uh, a new review quality review partnership with uh, the hospital, life care, and um, it's the relationship has been very positive, and I think we're building coordination and, and providing the best possible care for Lyrians as a result of this, and. Um, you know, we're looking at upgrading our paramedics so that they can also uh, provide the best possible care. And in partnership, the, the three organizations are working seamlessly, and it's, it's very good. Um, the Elyria Foundry Fire, you know, a lot of people don't realize um, what it took to fight this fire, but because of the heroic efforts of our fire department um, and their ability to save the mold, 87-year-old molds, this company is going to be able to stay in business. And uh, I think we really owe them a, a debt of gratitude. Um, when they're not fighting fires, they help with some value-added things in the city. We've got the fire department now working with the water pumping plant. They do their diving to do some repairs on their equipment. And we would normally be spending about $30,000 a year to do that. Now our fire department is picking up that expense. These are some of the highlights from our law department. Law department, in case you don't know what they do, this is all of what they do. And they're very busy people. Uh, Mr. Saracen is here, but you know they handled over 12,000, almost 13,000 traffic criminal parking cases, um, criminal cases, parking violations, private citizen complaints, civil files. Not to mention the major litigation for the city related to nuisances and liquor licenses and some some of the work that they've done downtown. <coughs> Neighborhoods uh, again, uh, a huge focus. We lobbied successfully for a land bank here in the county, and um, as, as did Mayor Rittenauer and other communities, and we are putting those available funds to good use in terms of um, looking at improving our housing stock, put a lot of energy in improving our building department and reallocating resources. We've added an operations manager, an inspector, secretarial support, and we took our senior staff vehicles and others and gave them to people who needed them. And, um, we, they're able to rise to the occasion for the best use of this available money to improve the housing stock in our community. Uh, you see a picture there of the trailer park that was demolished. Um, it was one of um, the major eyesores in our community, and we have been able to address that issue. So far, we've identified and processed 44 residential properties to be demolished, 38 by the end of March. Um, this is the trailer park at Abbey and Queens coming down. It's beautiful now. You didn't even see the trees before those trailers were gone, and now that the, the trees are there. We're processing an additional 40 residential properties for demolition. 
made an additional 14 emergency home repairs and demolition through our community block grant program and helped. Uh, we, we have 13 rehabilitated properties through a neighborhood stabilization program in the city of Elyria. And uh, we've sold eight. So if you know anybody who could use a beautifully renovated home, we're trying to get out of the housing business in the city of Elyria, but we still have some properties to sell. It might be worth looking at some of these. Um, we worked with Channel 5, Building Better Neighborhoods Initiative, and uh, local companies, 125 volunteers, uh, our Ward 5 councilmen, and um, brought resources together to help improve 23 properties on South uh, Gates and Maple. Uh, again, everybody who contributed to those in-kind services, thank you. Uh, we've been working with Habitat for Humanity, and we've offered 10 of those vacant lots for a dollar each to build new homes in our neighborhoods. Um, we're, um, again, encouraging even more block watches. And through volunteer support, um, we have created a rental registry, property registry, that we hope we'll be able to refine and execute in 2013. And that will help us um, maintain some of the rental properties better as well in the city of Elyria. Um, again, these are some of the building department statistics. Um, we are improving our response rate in the building department and um, continue to try to address all the calls that come into the city. There's quite a volume between building and the mayor's office, as you can see. Equal opportunity. Uh, we participate in the community with the Martin Luther King Holiday Commission, the annual Fair Housing Conference, and the ADA Spring Conference. Despite the economy, you've seen some major infrastructure improvements in the city of Elyria. And that's because of our engineering and other departments' abilities to leverage some of this federal and state money. So, you know, we all owe those individuals a debt of gratitude because they've made some major improvement projects happen, even in this time of austerity. We, we all saw West River uh, North improve, uh, Lorraine Boulevard and Lake Avenue this past year. A little bit of congestion, a few headaches, but better roads in the end. Um, City street renovation continues to be a challenge. Uh, in years past, we used to allocate about $800,000 to this. And unfortunately, last year, we only had about $200,000 to allocate. Um, but we, we're doing some things a little bit differently. We're trying to make the asphalt patching last longer uh, and um, try to be as efficient as possible with it. Bridges and sewers in 2012, we improved the Two Falls Pedestrian Bridge in Cascade Park, did some sanitary sewer work um, in those neighborhoods, Pinewood, Oak Brook, Turner. And these are some of the upcoming projects for 2013 and 14. Uh, Ford Road Bridge will be improved this summer. Um, we will be, it's a major uh, replacement. The bridge will be two lane, and uh, there are a lot of people that are gonna be very happy to have that actually happen, Mr. Body. Um, the Cascade Siphon Project, um, part of that is in Cascade Park, other parts of it is not, so uh, it's a greater cost than just the improvements down in Cascade Park. The East Falls River Walk, the Middle Avenue Improvement Project, it still needs a, a final cost, and then there's going to be some work on Griswold Road as well. We're also doing something a little bit different. We've never had a long range transportation plan in the city of Elyria. We have a new engineer, um, Mr. Yuvari, who um, is a former supervisor with the Ohio Turnpike Commission and has some real experience with plans. So we are, for the first time, putting together a long-range transportation plan for infrastructure improvements. Our water pumping plant, um, we were one of the first communities in uh, Ohio to have a water pumping plant on Lake Erie, and we continue to make improvements to it. Cemeteries. Um, cemeteries in Elyria are a real challenge. Um, you know, some of our cemeteries date back to the early 1800s. Um, we were able to improve the renovation site, or renovate the site of the Heman Ely family that had fallen into disrepair. We thought it was only fitting that our founder have um, some repairs made to that family plot, and it really turned out nicely. But we have some real challenges in that, in that cemetery. There's some mausoleums that need to be improved, and those are funds that are not readily available. So if anybody has a heart for improving mausoleums, please let me know, because we need to do some of that. Quality of life issues. Um, 
you know, again, our health department's very busy, so took in 8,000 phone calls, 5,000 referrals, uh, 60, 650 consults, over 1,000 immunizations, um, flu immunizations, family visits. These visits are very important to expectant mothers, young children, and children with medical challenges. And then, of course, your restaurants are safe because of our health department. Parks and Recreation has been enjoying somewhat of a resurrection after being mothballed for a while, but we have, they've teamed up to help us with our Reach and Rise Discovery Camps, and um, again, they were very instrumental with that. In terms of our pools, we have four pools in the city of Elyria, two of which are, were open last year. We served over 12,000 youngsters in those pools and gave swimming lessons to 684 kids and adults. Um, 10 uh, youth program leagues, and 52 adult softball leagues. Uh, softball is very big for adults in the city of Elyria. Um, these are some of the other programs. A lot of senior programming, over 1,200 active people, ages 55 and over. Um, in, a, in two months, I'm gonna be an active person. <laughs> and um, we do a lot of pavilion rental. Um, sponsored 10 lunchtime summer concerts. Uh, hope you have an opportunity to enjoy the summer concert series uh, this coming summer. We work a lot with Main Street Elyria and obviously all of those different um, events on Ely Square uh, are really characterize Elyria as a very special place in our downtown. These are just some of the other things our Parks and Recreation Department hosts. One of the things we wanted to add in terms of quality of life was the Mayor's Office on Volunteer Engagement. And um, we did create the Partnership for Elyria's Youth. Uh, these are um, organizations that have worked with us to provide healthy alternatives for Elyria's children. Last year, we provided Reach and Rise Discovery Camps, raised over $60,000, and provided free camp for 500 children in Elyria. Uh, with a real focus at at-risk kids. This summer we'll be providing camp, hopefully, if we can raise the money for over 800 kids. And um, so if you're interested, here's my little commercial, there's a form on the table, it'd be great. If everybody in this room just did a little bit, um, we would be able to serve over 800 children in our community. So if you're interested in doing that, please fill out a form uh, for that. I want to thank all of these partnering organizations. We continue to build the relationships and it's just all very positive. These are the companies that helped make that happen last year. If, you, if your company would like to help make these free Rich and Rise summer camps happen again, please fill out one of those forms. We'll be in touch with you. Again, this is the Building Better Neighborhoods Initiative and all the 125 volunteers and organizations that work with us to help make those home improvements on those two streets. These are all of the individuals and companies that contributed things. So thank you very much. If you're sitting next to somebody who did something, shake their hand because it wouldn't have happened without their help. Again, uh, recruiting volunteer auxiliary police is something we're trying to do. It, it frees up our uh, sworn police officers to do some other things and they really provide an invaluable service. Pride Day um, helped coordinate. Church of the Open Door did an amazing job and some other organizations. I've never seen so many volunteers in orange shirts in my life, but it was very impressive. Um, Pride Day, uh, we've been working with residents too on community gardens. We just had a meeting last week. We had 24 residents show up wanting to plant community gardens on vacant lots. Um, we were able to bring back the holiday lights at Finwood and buy new lights at Ely Square this year for the first time in many years. And again, individuals stepped up. We raised over $60,000 to be able to do that at no cost to the city. And I think it was a wonderful community building opportunity. Lots of kids coming home for the holidays that hadn't seen those lights in many, many years. And I think those are all things. These are companies that gave, or individuals who gave $250 or up. And just want to thank all those individuals, many of you sitting in this room, for helping to make that happen. Um, lots of interesting things happened in terms of image. Um, I was visited in, by uh, Dan Barry of the New York Times in February. He came to a press conference that I'd scheduled 
And um, said that his photographer was wandering through Elyria and thought it was a cute little place. So he had a copy of my plan in his hand and interviewed me for an hour and a half and said, I might be back. And I said, OK. A month later, he came back and spent the next nine months following me around while I was trying to figure out how to become the mayor. <laughs> and that was a very interesting experience. But we made the front page of the New York Times five days in a row in October. And um, it, is, it really has had some very positive benefits. Um, Donna's Diner has better business now. We've had some valid business inquiries, and we've had offers for help from people all over the world, including some Valeria alumni. So it's been very cool. Um, President Obama visited us in April. It was quite an experience being a new mayor and working with the police chief and the fire department and the neighboring uh, communities to make sure that our president was safe. And I kept saying, boy, we better not screw this up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was a great privilege. We've since then been um, invited to participate in virtual dialogue sessions. And I really feel like we have more of a voice at the federal level um, with, our, with our federal government. We had a gold medal winner. How awesome is that? Um, Illyria High School former athlete Tiana Madison won the gold medal uh, for her 100 relay. And now she's going to be on the bobsled team. So we celebrated that as a community. Um, Again, we're working very hard to try to build communications and trust. We will be releasing the results of our voluntary performance audit, working on our customer service. We have Mayor's Night in every Thursday of each month. You're, anyone is welcome. We have press conferences uh, every week on a regular basis, so any of the media can come if, if they like. Um, we have a Spotlight Illyria cable television show on Channel 12 that runs. And we have neighborhood and other community dialogue sessions scheduled. We'll be updating our strategic plan this year. So you will be seeing a schedule of public dialogue sessions coming out that I hope you'll participate in. And we're also going to be putting together a community report card, uh, doing some additional revisions to our website. And we have a, an e-newsletter that we're going to be doing as well. Um, again, you have a form on your table. If you can help with any of these items, we would love to have you participate. It's through your support that we're going to create this quality environment for all the Lurians to live. And um, if you can fill those out today and give it back to us today, that'd be great. If you want to think about it and mail them back, that's fine too. But we need to keep the momentum going. I just wanted to take a moment. I neglected to introduce my senior staff when I started because I got all involved with my. But we have some individuals here from the city that were kind enough to join me today. Could you please stand? Uh, we have some of the leadership of the city here. Uh, we have Mr. Yuvari, our new chief engineer. Wave Tim. We have our, our police chief, Mr. Dwayne Whiteley. Uh, fire chief, uh, Mr. Uh, Captain Benton. Uh, chief Benton, excuse me. Uh, we have Gary Dickerson here. He's a troubleshooter everywhere. Safety service director, Mary Sawarka. Assistant safety service directors, uh, Mr. Jackson and Mr. Jekyll. We have our assistant auditor. Um, John Farrell, and we have our law director, Scott Saracen. And we have, I think we have some city council members here, too. I think I saw Marcus, Marcus Madison. Anybody else? OK, very good. But these are some of the leaders of the city, and I couldn't do it without them. I'll be happy to answer any questions, and I'm sure they'd be happy to answer questions as well. Mr. Young. Uh, you talked, uh, Andy Young from the Chronicle, uh, you talked about achieving about a million dollars in savings in your first uh, year in office through enhanced revenue and savings. But you're looking forward into 2015 uh, to six million in less revenue. Uh, how do you uh, uh, resolve that problem? And, and it's 11 million it's 11 if, if the 5% right. uh, 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 sales tax, uh, I'm sorry, income tax isn't renewed. Right, right. Well, I think it's imperative, first of all, that we renew, we renew the income tax. Um, I can't, the, the city will basically come to a stop if we can't do that. And one of the risks that we have is that we only have one chance. That being said, we've been working very hard to reduce expenses this past year. It's made it a little bit easier to make up for that $1.7 million that we had to cut immediately as a result of the repeal of the estate tax and the decline in the local government fund. But we will be getting some additional recommendations from our state auditor. Um, again, I only showed the million dollars of savings this year. If you look at the amortized savings of those same numbers over the next two or three years, 
it does increase exponentially. So my goal, if we had to come back to ask for an additional tax, and I'm not saying that we will, is to minimize that amount as much as possible. We want people to know that we're doing everything in our, in our human power to make reductions and create an efficient system so that if we come back and have to ask for some additional money, that we've really made the case for it. And I'm not ready to say that yet. Um, again, we've got some additional recommendations coming from the performance audit. One of the things that's really challenging economically for a city is, and it's one of the things that I had to learn, is that um, you know, we have a $108 million overall budget. And of that, about $30 million of general fund. But so many of those funds are earmarked because of federal money um, for specific purposes that we can't move the money around. So while it seems simple that you could take from this area to uh, reallocate resources in another area, it's very difficult to do that. So even if there is savings, um, we need the savings to be, and it's all savings to taxpayers, so no matter where the recommendations come from the performance audit, whether they're general fund or outside the general fund, they're gonna be valuable because they're gonna save people money. But the, the more valuable savings are from the general fund because of the, those are the day-to-day -day services of the city. And um, so we're hoping that we get some additional savings out of that. I would anticipate that regardless, it's not gonna be enough to make up for all that. So my goal is to really do everything we can to try to minimize expenses so that when, if we have to come back to you, you know we've done all those things and we can make the case for it. Other questions? I would ask one more. You sure. uh, mentioned that you hoped the uh, uh, 49th Street Bridge project would be done in time to help the mall. Right. Is there some uh, suggestion there that the mall might be uh, about to close or some anchor store is about to pull out? Not at all. And, and I'm sure Mr. Bressler could speak to that. And, and if I gave that impression, I certainly didn't mean to. We've spoke, we speak regularly. And right now, actually some very positive things are happening at the mall. Dunham's have, has moved into that space, uh, which is a very good thing. We've got a, a $22.4 million investment about to happen that's going to improve that infrastructure. And I think that all bodes well. In fact, I was talking to Crane's Cleveland Business about it this past week, and we're trying to get the news out about that because we want people to know uh, that the, the va value of that commercial property hopefully is going to escalate. Um, we've also got some other improvements. The Hampton Inn is going in there. There's over a million dollars of improvements going into the Ramada Inn as well. So, um, and we do have some interest in the, the Mountain Jacks property as well. So um, those are all very positive signs for our mall area. And I think only good things will happen. I would be concerned if, if we weren't gonna, able to move this project up. Again, it's the only thing holding it back right now is the bond sale for the Ohio Turnpike. They're gonna be selling bonds against anticipated toll revenue for the Turnpike and freeing up some money to help pay for those projects. And we're doing everything we can, even through the state legislature now, to make that happen because we think this project is that important. Any other questions? Thank you so very much. I really appreciate it.